Rocky Road? <laughs> Bits. <laughs> Welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and we've got some really interesting products uh, from Gamers Grass here. They hit me up and they said, hey, you want to talk about these new basing bits? And I was like, bits are sort of my thing. Tell me more. <laughs> and it turns out they, uh, they put out these two new sets of uh, basing bits that allow you to kind of create your own sort of uh, basing diorama, you know, use a little pumice, and we're gonna do some of that today. I'll show you a couple different pumices to use. And they have a really good guide on how to do it, um, but this is something that I've kind of been doing before the resin base craze kind of create, uh, crept up in the late 2000s. And nowadays, you know, sometimes it's just fun just to do a one-off base, and uh, these new basing bits will definitely help with that matter. So let's jump over to their site. I, I wanna show you Gamers Grass's site because it's, it's very important um, I think on um, both a retailer and a consumer standpoint uh, to know a little bit more about these products as well. So here's their site. It's just gamersgrass.com. Um, it's one of the better designed websites out there. It doesn't quite resize and everything, but that's okay. Uh, the thing I do want to point out is find your local store feature on here, which is really cool because, you know, not everybody always stocks these uh, products. So you can get in here and you can get really visceral. Um, Oh, it's funny it worked last time. I don't know what's going on with that. Google's being all weird today. So you can get in here and you can see, and there's actually a lot more stores here in America that stock their products now as uh, last time we recorded this video and kind of showed you there was, it was a little bit more sparse. So uh, be sure to give them a call because they don't, you know, not a lot of stores are not, aren't gonna have quite as many of these bases as you might need for an army. And some stores might not even have them, but they could special order them through the distributors for you instead of you going all the way over here uh, to Europe to get them yourself, which is kind of interesting. And speaking of that, I also wanted to talk about uh, which you can't see here because of my stupid face. But when you do order from them, and it, and it takes about a week or two to get in, ours come a little bit faster because they're a bigger box. But uh, when you do order from them, their shipping is a little bit higher. And I, I say higher and that's kind of a misnomer because let's be real right now. I ship a lot of stuff. And if you ship overseas over an eight ounce package, it's gonna be $13 minimum. So I feel like $11 shipping from overseas just for one of these doesn't seem too bad, but just keep in mind that overseas shipping, this is gonna ship out of Europe, is a little bit expensive, but by expensive I mean it's not $5 because it's here in America, you know what I'm saying? Even $5 is, isn't, is kind of the misnomer these days. Anyways, moving on. And I guess I say that because, yeah, shipping has gone up so much in the past couple of years, especially with uh, e-commerce and all sorts of things. So going to the website, if you want to get to the basing bits area, there's only two different varieties. And one of them is these really cool temple basing bits, which I, I think we've already posted by this point, the temple basing video for their pre, um, pre-painted, pre-ready-to-go bases, which are in incredible. I'm going to start using them on a lot of my stuff. I already have uh, some Admech guys with them. They also have the rocks, which are just kind of generic rocks that they use on a lot of their other base varieties uh, that they have out, which are really neat. So a pack of either of these, and there's quite a bit in this in this pack, which I'm about to show you when we uh, open this up. I actually don't know how much it weighs, but I would imagine it weighs at least eight ounces because they're going to uh, charge you at least eight ounces shipping to get it to you. So each one of these, when you click here, um, for 20 bucks, I feel like that's, that's pretty good for uh, the value you're getting on all this stuff. Um, basing bits, replicate small natural man-made items. Uh, they don't give you a, a, a exact piece count, but here's a little bit better of an idea of exactly how many you're gonna get in there and a little bit more of a close-up. So if you're gonna do a whole army, no. You're gonna need a couple of these, but if you're just gonna do some one-offs or like, you know, maybe some knights or maybe some larger models that you can't quite um, get, possibly right now on uh, their bases because base sizes are changing all the time. So this might be a really good product for you. So let's open them up. Let me show you what they look like and give you some ideas on how to customize these for your particular army as well. So here's the two different packs and these are actually pretty much larger size packages here, much larger than a Games Workshop uh, kind of clam pack if you're thinking of something like that. So they're about seven inches by about three and a half, give or take. This one looks a little emptier because I've already used a couple of the bits out of here, um, but it's gonna be full of just like the temple bases over here. So between these two packs right here, you can really make a lot of different uh, exciting styles of your own custom bases. 
So I fumbled out a few of the bits here. Something I wanted to point out too is that these are for pretty much a, a whole size base. Now there's some smaller ones in here, but those are a little bit fewer and far between. So it, this is great for kind of making the bases that you might need because there's a 40 mil base and here's a 32 mil base. So they're going to pretty much cover up the whole base. So these are good, like I said, for one-offs or for larger uh, style bases, but if you're going to want an army's worth or something just for this style base, maybe you want to go with their pre-painted. And that's kind of what I'm trying to get at is, this is more for the, the hobby type aspect because chunks like this are going to go good on like an 80 or 100 oval or round or like a 170 oval or a 120 oval for uh, the larger kind of knights and dread knights and things like that out there. But as far as detail goes, they're, they're not any less detailed than anything else they, they put out with their normal bases. I mean, there's a really, really good resin cast right there and there's a couple different styles and I think there's a couple of Spartan heads on this one right here and we'll take a look at the rocks here in a second too. Here are the basing bits for the rocks and just like I showed you before, they are just as well detailed. You can see they're almost like very, very craggy and very sharp, which will be great for dry brushing and adding a lot of details in there. But no matter what style you use, whether it's the temple bases or not, they're gonna have this little lip on it and this lip you're gonna have to, well, you're gonna want to cover up on the bases. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is grab some sort of base and some glue. Now we're gonna use a 50 mil base right here because um, it gives you a little bit more area to work with and can, we can kind of show off some of the different process to do this and just glue it down. But once you do that, you kind of see what I was talking about there. There's gonna be a little bit of lip on it, but that's okay. Um, I should have scratched that off, but that didn't come on. That's okay, so what you're gonna to wanna to do is add a little bit of, oh, there we go add a little bit of pumice. And there's two different types of pumices, not counting the, the Games Workshop stuff, which will probably work uh, just as good, but I personally like a little bit uh, thicker kind of pumice. There's one by Liquitex, which is called Resin Sand, which is a little bit different in consistency from a normal pumice. Um, this has got like micro beads and, and stuff. You can kind of, I think they're micro beads, but you can see uh, it's a little bit more texture. Then Vallejo has a lot of different styles of pumice. And you see me use this coarse pumice. Uh, throughout you know the last 10 years worth of tutorials here on the channel. This stuff is great. Uh, they also make some colored ones. There's like black lava and different styles and they're in a kind of a different style tub. But for the most part, this is um, this is the more thicker and uh, I, I would say you, a little bit more bang for your buck there. So either of these are gonna work great or you know you can grab the GW texture paint stuff too, which will work fine, but I just don't feel like it's quite as textured and you might have to put several applications onto it. Now the best way I've found to uh, apply pumice is usually just a buster brush, which I have right here. We had an unfortunate uh, garbage disposal accident where uh, a bunch of my crappy brushes were eaten uh, in the sink like they were Boba Fett or something. But, um, and this is actually dried out since I used it last. So normally this would be a little bit thinner, um, but uh, it's kind of dried out. And this, this particular um, bottle or pack of uh, pumice has lasted me about five years or so, give or take. And whatever you use pumice wise, always store it in a uh, as airtight as possible bag, just so you get as much life out of it if you're not gonna use it all in one use. But fortunately, I had already uh, used and let one of these dry, but you can kind of see what you would normally do uh, for the pumice right here. Just use your buster brush, or actually you can use the GW uh, texture tool right here, or, or the spreader as I like to call it, which actually works a little bit better if you kind of rinse it with some water. Now onto something that isn't uh, already dried out, but that's okay. We have a completed piece right here to show you from uh, ones that weren't dried out. It might've be, might been that that pot just gave up the ghost when I uh, pre-made or pre-staged that base right there. So we're gonna grab some of this resin Liquitex uh, stuff right here. And like I said, using the ladle, uh, is a great tool from Games Workshop. Now this this particular texture tool here is a little overpriced. So if you didn't get it in like some sort of bundle, I'm not sure it's worth the eight dollars or so that it is. When you could just do something like this and just grab your, you know, you're just a just a crappy paintbrush that you might have laying around, and slowly and surely just kind of steadily ladle out, whether it's with the brush or the GW texture tool, um, a little bit of the pumice or resin sand, whichever one you're using right here and you're just gonna kind of get it all into this area. And once you do that, you'll notice that it stacks up a little bit. 
Um, and it's going to be, this particular stuff is so thick that it would be kind of wavy, whereas the pumice right here kind of mats down a little bit. So all you're going to do is wherever you want, or perhaps wherever it contacts the resin areas, just take a little bit of water on your brush and kind of work it around those areas and kind of flatten it down a little bit to make a more natural uh, transition between these areas right here. And you can put as much or as little of uh, the resin bits on here as you want, but the key is to, to kind of mask that little lip right there and also create the texture. And you can mix in sand, uh, fine grit, whatever, rocks, even kitty litter is a great way to get uh, some larger scale chunks of um, debris that you might not be able to find normally or you know just off the shelf uh, so i've actually gone in and used some clean cat litter and added it to my mixes before when you get your bases to the point that you feel very happy with you're going to set them aside to dry obviously we've already done that magic swoosh swoosh and oh and don't forget to rinse out your brushes so you don't want that all that debris and uh, pumice and stuff to dry on your brushes and because this is plastic the little texture tool is pretty easy to clean off uh, to be quite honest so that's that's pretty easy peasy uh, to get done there now once all that stuff dries i'll show you exactly what it looks like magic swoosh <laughs> so here's a 50 mil base with uh the was this resin sand so the resin sand is going to dry out nice and flat when you add a little bit of water and you kind of put it around those areas right there where it hides the lip so once you get a base coat and do some dry brushing which this will look really good because it has all the sharp edges this will look nice and you won't be able to tell that these pieces actually are pieces people will be like oh cool where'd you get that texture is that bark what is that and then you know you just kind of explain what you did right there now when it comes to the vallejo pumice the pumice itself is a little bit more trans uh transparent translucent whatever you want to call it 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 stacks up in a very similar ma uh, manner as uh, the resin sand but uh this base is a little brighter because this is the only other base i had to use it's, it's going to mat down, but it's also not going to, it's going to stay true to whatever little texture you kind of left in there. So if you want some waves or some sand dune-ish sort of things, you can probably do that. If you want those laying flat, well, you might want to add a little water to your brush or get a larger brush or use your fingers and just kind of mat it down in a pattern. Whereas the resin sand is going to definitely lay down a little bit more. Uh, this, the Vallejo Palmas isn't. And the diff you're going to have to experiment with the different pumices from Vallejo because they all have different properties and different textures. Like I said, the black lava is a little bit finer grit, but it is black completely. So it'll look totally different um, when you're done with it right there. You almost can just dry brush right over it and you're good to go, which is its own appeal in, in and of itself. So those are kind of the, the, the brief techniques. Like I said, you're going to want to experiment more with some of the Vallejo pumices. They are expensive. They're like 10-ish dollars. Uh, for those right there. So make sure you kind of do a little bit of research and get exactly what you're looking for there. Whereas the Vallejo or the uh, Liquitex resin sand, I'm starting to prefer more myself um, when it comes to you know, all these Games Workshop bases that you're doing with little plastic inserts on them and then you kind of have to flatten them out and make them fit on the base itself. Um, stuff like Eisenhorn or even uh, the most recent Mephiston character had that base that he was kind of glued into. So they're starting to go more and more that way. So it might be worth picking up a bottle of this for you. And we'll put some links uh, below to our Amazon store where you can check those all those products out, of course. So um, that is exactly how to get these products ready and use, well, one way to use these on your bases. So whether it's the temple basing bits or the rocks, rocky basing bits over here, uh, Gamers Grass not only can get your bases ready to go out the gate with uh, some pre-paints or give you the tools and the bits you need to make your own size bases for maybe things that aren't available currently or just give you those extra conversion pieces for your dioramas, your display tables, your larger size bases and things like that out there. So make sure you check them out at gamersgrass.com. Thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, hit me up with any questions you might have about any of these processes or you know some of the supplies and the different things out there. You can also get stuff like this at your local art uh, supply store as well. And uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our videos.